six. Okay. All right, I'll call the meeting to order. Focus of tonight's meeting. Um, we're going to meet with the auditor. And then we're going to hear a facilities plan update. Is anyone willing to do a um, evaluation of the meeting tonight? And I'm going to. All right. Um, <laughs> hands, so. your care is community. Did, is there something you wanted to address to the board as part of our community yes, engagement? There is. Yes, um, I just wanted to, I talked to Laura last week because um, I was curious to know whether this board was the agency uh, to whom I should address an appeal for a request for public records. Now, there seems to be a little bit of a dispute at OSSB. The public records law stipulates that any appeal is to be brought to the agency, which I don't know what that means. And when I spoke with the Agency of Education, they suggested that it was the board, uh, which I don't know one way or the other. So if the board could enlighten me, that would be helpful. Well, I reached out to Lane and Pietro today, so you want to? I can speak. Um, as, as you know, you've received a letter um, from, I have. from Heather explaining the exceptions to the rule. Um, and uh, also just requesting that you know any communications about it go through them as the board's representatives. In terms of um, once that matter is resolved, I mean you can make the request directly to me, and I'm happy to. Okay, so um, I'm here tonight as a member of the public, and I know I'm also involved in litigation with um, the school to try to get my son special education and enrollment that we've been spending a lot of money on fighting about, but not coming to reason on the, whatever our varying perspectives are. So uh, I know that that's the attorney's position concerning that, and I have responded in kind, but again, I see a duality here in that I am a member of the public. And so in taking the appeal, the question is, is this the proper body to address the appeal? Because I've heard from your attorney. But you have not heard from me. Um, and I would make the request to me. Um, so, okay, so yeah. when I spoke to the Agency of Education, or maybe it was Laura, with all due respect, you know, I, I brought it to the district, you know, the back story. And, and so it, it seemed to be almost futile to bring it back to you with, again, all due respect insofar as you're the superintendent. But we haven't communicated directly over that, so that would be the... the so if that's what you're saying and suggesting... Yeah. And so what I, what I will do is, is once I get the, the, the official request, you know, even email is, is fine. Well, I've already made it. So do you want me to make another request? To, to me, yes. To you. Um, once I get the official request, the question that I will have of, of Pietro is, you know, there, it looks like there's two pathways here. Right. And so this pathway, uh, because the litigation that's pending is, yeah. is, is already been addressed, but this is potentially another pass, pathway, and if that is correct, then we should be providing the documentation. Okay, so I don't want to get bogged down here because, uh, you know, this yep. is your meeting and so forth, but, um, uh, yeah, um, again, I can't separate myself from being both people. If you know what I mean. So I think what I'll do, if, if you're open to this, is I'll follow up with you. And then I don't want to make a big deal out of it. You know? No, uh, but, uh, but I, I think there's a legitimate question there worth, worth answering. And like I said, what I'll do is, is yep. as soon as I get that, I'll ask the two-pathway question. Okay. And see the advice that I get. And sure. I, I copied Sean. Uh, yep. I, I sent him a response, albeit late. And I, uh, yeah. And I, I have materials here. I'm happy to give it to you tonight. Um, Great. Yeah, plus it's interesting to, to find out. Well, <laughs> the, the, legal, the legal interpretations. I don't know who's for, for kind of the outside a little bit stuff. watching. It, the, well, the, you know, I mean, you know, because I don't see this as a discovery issue, because I'm not interested in it for discovery, <laughs> I'm interested in it as a member of the public. It's a little circuitous, a little bit. But I, 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 again, I, I want to respect the form that I'm in here. Yep. You know, okay. And then, the, then what I would say at that point in time, if the response um, from me is unsatisfactory, that yeah. that would be 
the time to take it. To so bring it back here. Yeah. Okay, very well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, but, and to put that in writing to the board chair I, ahead of time so we can get it on the Well, I called Laura uh, it, it, very well, you know what I mean? Uh, and I do have something in writing, but I don't want to obviate the process if you're laying it down. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. No, appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Other community? Yes? Yeah. Um, people are curious what's happening with Mr. Barnett's position and responsibilities, uh, short term and long term, now that he's out of the district. So currently, um, and you can gui guide me because there's just kind of two questions there. Um, currently, what has been happening is that um, Ken Cadal um, and Katie Sutton have been stepping in um, to provide assistance, uh, administrative assistance. Both of them have their licenses, um, and so they've been very supportive uh, in terms of making sure that the day-to-day -day operations, the discipline, and then some of the bigger work on curriculum is continuing to get done um, in David's absence. Um, right now, we are in the middle of a search process for an assistance principal um, for the high school. Um, they met today to kind of review and determine which candidates um, they want to go forward with and, uh, and interview. Um, and so hopefully that whole process will be wrapped up in the next two weeks or so. Um, that position will start on July 1st. And that would be... Assistant principal or assistant principal, principal or? assistant principal for academics. Okay. Um, so, so a strong focus. We're looking for somebody with a strong focus on, on curriculum. So assistant to Elijah then. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Josh, do you have anything to ask or as a community member? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Chair Josh. Yeah. We had to it over oh. Okay. okay. All right, um, so next on our agenda is to meet with the auditor. Um, no, you here? Like yeah. packed up, what would be better? And could you send a agenda and stuff over here to the Yes, just a gigantic <laughs> cache of paper. <laughs> So uh, I'm Teresa Kajewski <laughs> from Father Gill, Sagawian Valley, and uh, we performed the June 30, 2017 audit of OSSU and the member districts. So at that point, they are all still separate and hadn't consolidated until July 1st. So these are all the audits. They got finalized sometime during the last, well, the last one was a uh, March and the first one was probably January or so. Or so um, so uh, I was asked to come and kind of present the audit. I don't, you know, the numbers are kind of, uh, you've already received all the numbers um, from Robin, so I don't know if you really want to go through those or not, but I have, you have copies of them. I have OSSUs. I just had a couple of things that I kind of wanted to, to talk about. Um, one is all the audits were clean audits, and the single audit was at the supervisory union level for that year, and there was no single audit findings on the federal program that we tested. Um, the, the only issues that we, we kind of have have to do with the reconciling of the bank accounts um, that are not done at the supervisory union that are done by the outside tre treasurer. Um, and then some of them related to uh, the high school and the tech center, the, um, the cash accounts associated with the scholarship funds and, and the uh, agency funds. Um, we didn't find anything wrong with them. They just, uh, some of them weren't getting done timely or they had really, really old outstanding checks, like years. This is similar to, I don't know who I talked to last year on the board because this is all a new board, but I talked to the um, supervisor union board. Um, I did come about a week ago and meet with Robin and we went through the beginning numbers to get them all right in OSSD and she's working towards that but the OSSD bank recs have not been done since July 1st so I don't you know that's I think there needs to be a little bit of pressure on the treasurer to get those done Robin's been trying to get them done is my understanding um, so 
anything that you guys can do to kind of get that rolling um, with the judge. I don't know if the treasurer is here. Um, so you're talking about um, the beginning half year of OSSD's operation during from July 1st, 2017 so right now. until now. Okay. Are we, what, so we're running on. So when do we have to complete that audit process? Bob? So your your next audit will be June 30, 2018. Um, but the, you know you really should reconcile bank accounts monthly, and hopefully within a couple of weeks after that month ends. Um, and I think it's just a matter of process of because it would be really good if that got done using the accounting software in the business office mm -hmm. um, because that's what it's meant to do. And otherwise, you're just recreating. Um, more work and and then also making sure that you have all the other accounts named correctly because there's a lot of other bank accounts that mm -hmm. it's not just the main bank accounts there's you know each each district before had multiple bank accounts um, and so the, the big ones all got moved over most of the cash not all of it yet um, so there are still cash there is still money in the other districts name even though there really is not a that. So I think that Robin was working on getting those done. She had the April bank statements with those, and we kind of went over what we feel the, the correct balance is and to get that moved over. Um, so it's just a, a process of that, you know, she, the business office only has so much. They can't say, call up the bank and say, transfer this money to this account. That's not their, their job. So um, that just means I would suggest getting that done. You know, obviously, you know, I would imagine that the statements that you've been getting are <laughs> accurate, but they're only as accurate if the bank statement's not reconciled. Like, mm -hmm. there can be, you know, there could be something wrong, but I think Robin knows enough about the income that's coming in and the expenses that are going out that she can compare it to the budget and to history, even though it's history to all the other schools. Um, so that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with this audit, but I just know that, you know, we, she wants to work on getting this to be smoother and earlier. You know, we don't really want to be completing the audit in January, February, and March. You know, it'd be nice to have them done by January is actually pretty much when most schools get there, you know. December would be nice, but January is usually how most of them kind of overcome <coughs> our districts. Not really schools or anything, right? <laughs> Um, I mean, other than that, you you know, they're unqualified reports. We were able to find everything we needed to find. Very helpful at the business office. Um, very professional. That seems like all the you know, special ed seems to run smoothly with you know the accounting. And, you know. I know that um, there was some <clears throat> discussion about our chart of accounts, and we weren't getting much guidance from the state um, right. based initially yeah. about have we, do we so have a, a good chart of accounts that you're satisfied with? Your new point? ones? Well, I haven't really looked at it, but it's my understanding is that the state is still requiring you guys to, to um, break them out by each school, which is still, so the chart of accounts is huge. Mm -hmm. Why would that be? Um, and for I, you know, longer. you have to. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's like they're, they, I think it's because not everybody's consolidated, maybe. They want to keep track of how much each building costs, kind of. Mm -hmm. Not each building, but like what's going on in the building, even though the revenue's not coming in that way. The revenue's coming in in total. Yeah, that's Yeah, really so I think. Yeah. Counterintuitive. <laughs> right, after having, well, forcing, you know, we're encouraging districts right. to merge to save on that sort save of that time. Yeah. I mean, the, the good thing is there's not, there's not money getting built back and forth based on that, right? right. So the revenue side is definitely more streamlined. And the, ex the thing with it, so many expenditure accounts, there's a good, it's, it, it's easier to maybe not post it to the right account when you, you know, mm -hmm. do the best. I mean, thankfully they're already used to doing it by school. You know, so they, you know, they already know the codes are 1237 in whatever school and some other Code is another school. I don't know if but that's it. They're also doing the transition to the new software that's uh, yeah. mandated by law. I don't know if that may have anything to do with that. But so like for for the audit purposes, I definitely don't care by school. So it's really just for the stat report. <coughs> and 
get to an August, I think it's August 15th or something like yeah. that, but that has to be done by, and, and I don't even think special ed, that might be still getting, I think that's reported in once, you know, by services, not by, yeah. Yeah. But, but, so that's basically really what I have, unless there's any other questions. I mean, we can go over the numbers, but they, you know, you've already approved stuff for the new district, and these are the numbers that are, they're all coming, you know, the ending numbers and making the beginning numbers for the district. So in the, even though that chart of accounts is by school, when you do the audit next year, is that one consolidated audit as opposed to separate ones? For be, there'll be just one audit report. Awesome. Excellent. The, really <laughs> yeah, the, what will be a little bit, you know, the, the tech center yeah. and, you know, and that stuff maybe still we'll probably be but it'll be its own fund like it already was. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so there'll be the information that we have to look at is still all the same, but at least it's only one report. Sure. And hopefully, you know, we get the reports easier and, you know, consolidated way. So I think that they could be, even though it's each by school, it's also by each by um, the first 1,100 the functions. And then that's actually how we report the audit by all 1,100s, let's yeah. say, you know, so it's not, so be all the 1,100s from all the schools will be yeah, it's similar to how you budget, right? I mean, I think that, that works. I mean, it starts at the schools, but then it gets consolidated. Okay. So you'll still be spending just as many days? Um, well, I felt bad with all the days that I'm hoping right. that, that with doing some more preliminary work, some of that stuff was still just because that was our second year and just yeah. getting the stuff. You know, it really was a cash in the accounts payable and accounts. So we already worked on a lot of that on last week. So I think it will hopefully be, you know, four or five days tops. <laughs> now on the um, on the old checks that were being deposited, so the basically the cash handling with the student accounts. Um, well, those I've, are still going. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, did they have a clear set of procedures for how they're supposed to be doing it? Mm. So they it just wasn't really. Well, they do. Yeah, I think they, they do. It just wasn't all consolidated in one place. It was just lots of, if you think about the scholarship funds, there's like a page of them. Yeah. And it just isn't consolidated anywhere. And those accounts, I'm assuming, are still in the associated, you know, those names. I don't mm -hmm. think those have been switched over. And I don't know if they actually legally have to, but I, eventually I would guess. Yeah, I'm just checking the follow-up, so. Yeah. What, which accounts, uh, which scholarship accounts are you talking about? So the high school has a, a lot of yeah, little like, ones. Like, little like ones. a graduation with the rotary and the this and that. Well, that's like, yeah, that's talking about the ones that, ones that we as the district administer. So they, they well, I, I think you actually administer all like, of them. Yeah, like, well, no, like National Honor Society would be like a small yeah. amount of money, so they probably keep that in their student there's, activity there's account. There's three really big ones that are looked at very, but then there's all these other ones. It would yeah. be great if they could come up with a procedure to just combine them all even, really, so there's not so many accounts at the bank. But there's a couple, there's one at Edward Jones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a couple of yeah. well, and, those, and those are very specially set up. I they mean, are. There's nothing that's going to change on those. Right. So that and that's yeah, that's okay. fine. But then there's just some other. Those ones are that, like endowment accounts. Yeah. And then there's yeah. also student activities Activity scholarships, accounts, which is just you know, class of 1986 that still has five hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, but there are there's a, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm just taking a guy. I don't know that for a fact, but there's there's. One. So just really, it's like who's really responsible for all that, I think is. The principal accounts are pretty well covered, you know, but the, the little ones is there. Is there like a de minimis threshold that underneath that amount, you would say, you know, if it's some remnant amount that is not. It goes back to the school. I. Should, should I think you probably have to like probably have you can probably consolidate it into one account. Some of them are consolidated, but they've just been going on so long. It's almost like 
he asked, uh, didn't do anything with this? And if not, then... Yeah, usually the, especially like the class accounts um, becomes a problem, but usually what they do is if they're old class accounts, they reach out to the last two officers. Right. Um, and if they've got the two officers' signatures, a lot of them will put the money aside for a reunion or, or whatnot. But most districts, um, I don't know about Vermont, but Massachusetts, um, you know, they've got a year, year after they're gone. Yeah, they're so not. I don't, I don't know if anyone's, you know, taken the time to just yeah. say, let's get rid of, let's do that. It might be, it might be a good point. I mean, it's a, it's a project, you know, but, yeah, you know, less paperwork in the long run. Sure. See if we can get some buy-in and roll them all into a scholarship. Most importantly, is getting the OSSD bank rec done. Yes. yes. Much more. Very much more important. I yes. That. <laughs> that should be one, but, yeah. All right, any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy the night. Yep. Hopefully you get out when it's laid out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we're ahead on time. All right. How's it going? Sorry. Discussion of restructuring health reimbursement arrangements yes. for professional and support staff. And uh, the, the professional, so this is blah. Uh, this is um, this was complex enough. I, I spent a good amount of time kind of writing it up in the, the superintendent's report. Um, but basically, during the last round of negotiations, the um, healthcare reimbursement accounts um, were on the table, and it looks like folks had reached out to Future Planning and a couple of the other plan administrators out there to see what they could do and the uh, language that was put into place in a lot of the CBAs um, was based upon what Future Planning said it could do. Um, so Future Planning got started uh, a month or two into the school year, um, started having problems, they weren't reimbursing folks, and then a few months back they just sent out one day out of the blue, we're no longer going to do this because we can't. Um, there was a lot of discussion um, both at the state level um, with state legislators as well as with uh, the superintendents group. And um, most folks settled on a company called DataPath. Um, DataPath actually operates the cards that Future Planning was using where you go in and you swipe to get your benefits. Um, and uh, so like they. a debit card. Yeah, so they figured since they're already doing it and managing it for future planning, this would be a smooth transition. People wouldn't have to restart the cards. They wouldn't have to refill out all the paperwork. Um, DataPath um, stepped into the breach, and after most of the districts switched over to DataPath, came out and said, well, you know, um, there's problems with uh, prescriptions. Um, there's problems being able to track the out-of-pocket costs for people on, on prescriptions. We don't have a way of doing it. Um, and so the problem that we have in terms of the CBA is that it was required that the district find a plan administrator that would do all those functions so that the, the faculty didn't have to. Well, we don't have that anymore. Um, and this is only for the out-of-pocket expenses. This is for up to 550 a year. Um, and once the out-of-pocket is done, then Blue Cross Blue Shield takes over and tracks how much money is being used and whatnot. So, Rather than be in violation of the CBA, which we will shortly be, um, we'll also talk about the, the deadline that, that DataPath put on it as well. Um, the suggestion is is to pay first dollar um, on the prescriptions for the faculty, so they're getting a small financial benefit. Um, you know, out of that 550, if you go to the doctor, um, most of that's going to be used up in that first visit with the medical side of things. Um, you know, there might be a rare case where somebody's only getting an expensive prescription and the 550 um, would be covered just under the, the prescription for that first bill of the year. Um, but talking with Robin and, and taking a look at the numbers the best we could, it looks like there's enough in the HRA account, which we own anyway, um, to support this and still have um, money left over. Um, this also would be compensating the faculty for the, the hardships of uh, having to kind of manage a lot of this on their own. Um, one of the big things at this point in time is that uh, for payments for reimbursements, they actually have to apply to DataPath, right? Get all the paperwork to DataPath. DataPath then sends the employee the check, and then the employee has to then pay for the medical. Oh. Whereas before, so 
um, they, there's that hardship piece that their union is using to kind of justify you know, the, the, the little bit of the extra expenditure to cover the out-of-pocket cost for prescriptions up to the 550. Um, so yeah. would this be the case going forward just for the next calendar year, or is this... So this would be, this would replace the current way we do things on um, this kind of a side agreement. Um, because that was CBA contract language, it's permanent until people renegotiate it, it would be permanent. The caveat here being is that it looks like all parties are on board to go with a statewide negotiated health plan, and that may take all this out of our hands anyway. Uh, don't know, but it, it's quite a possibility. And I don't know what the time frame is that they, they have for putting that in place, but I think sooner, sooner than later uh, by the sounds of things coming out of the legislature. And do you have any estimate for what this would cost the district as far as? Uh, it was minimal. Um, again, uh, most of the out-of-pocket costs, they were still able to track the medical. Mm -hmm. Most of the out-of-pocket cost, you know, is $300 just to show up for the, the first doctor's appointment of the year. Um, so that would be covered. Um, I think at the, the toughest estimate, um, and this is a high, high, high estimate, is 107 um, you know, per employee. $107 per employee. Yeah. Or, or, or family, um, depending on how you look at it. I don't but, understand. I thought, and, and I did read this quickly, I thought it was like $550 extra dollars per employee that we would be incurring an additional cost. So on the, that's right, it's, a, it's really, it take, takes me a while to wrap my head about it every time I think about it. So when, um, well, we're starting off in a, new, in a new fiscal year, right? So it's a new, new fiscal year. The first $550 are uncovered. That was the agreement we made with the union. 10% 10, 10 the employees cover out of pocket. So it comes out to 550, um, pretty much for everybody that's that's on the plan. Um, that 550 um, out of pocket, um, you got to add it up to know when they reach the 550. So that's when the HRA would kick in full time. They are still able to add up the medical portion, right? The doctor's visit, the shot, um, those parts and things that aren't prescription. Um, so those we would not be paying for, but they would still go towards that 550. It's only the prescription portion of that. 550 that we would pay for. Typically what happens if I go to the doctor, the first $300 is the, the medical bill, right? It's the, it's the, the, the visit to the doctor. Um, and then there may, be, may or may not be a prescription that follows. So because the prescription can't be handled by the administrative agency, company, whatever they are, <clears throat> we are covering that sort of separately? Because they, because they can't track it. And again, I don't understand why they can't. That's a whole other whole other piece we're trying to figure out because they can't track it um, we will then be in violation of the CBA because they won't give them the prescription they can't write out the, the check for the prescription piece so the the easiest thing to do um, at this point in time is just pay first dollar on the prescriptions um, and then once they're out of pocket money that 550 is run up whether it's prescriptions or, or whether it's medical bills then they're done they're covered under the HR anyway um, fully so the maximum amount per employee is could be 550, could be 550 if all they're spending is prescriptions. Uh, but that's not typically, you know, what happens. So we might have somebody who might be on rare. In my world, it is a rare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, same thing with my mom. You know, yeah. but um, yeah. in our case, um, I think the estimate that Robin gave was about 107. Um, and that was a high estimate, just to be safe. And just based on historical usage. Yeah, because so, that's not something that's easy to, I couldn't even wrap my head around how to calculate it off the cuff. So. And how many employees are we talking about? Uh, everybody on, that's covered under the, the teacher's contract, so. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so probably 100 and, I, I, I'll have to get you an exact number, if I were to estimate, probably 130-ish. Plus support staff, right? Yeah, on the insurance. support staff that are on it. A lot of teacher support must take. Yeah. So under two hundred grand. Yeah. She said there is um, there is money in the HRA um, account, so that we own the account, we fund it, and then if there's money left over in there, it gets rolled over into the next year to be used. Um, so if the if the state, if everybody doesn't come up with a plan going forward. Mm -hmm and the two companies that currently exist aren't able to do what we need them to do, what's the backup? 
uh, next round of negotiations come up with something else? With CBA or with? with the, it. There's like two different things going on. So, it, so we it would be <laughs> negotiating with the CBA because. Right. Yeah, we, we can't find, Contact the reality is, is we, we can't find a plan administrator to meet this, right, so we need you to give this up and we'll give you this Something in exchange, right. okay. uh, because we're taking away a, a potentially a financial benefit. Unless there. some miracle company shows up that can do the things that we need them to do. Yeah, right. it's, um, again, we're still, it's not making any sense what we can't. Um, I have the medical piece I kind of get, because that's tracked by Blue Cross Blue Shields. So Datapath isn't really tracking it. They pull Blue Cross Blue Shields data for it. Mm -hmm. But why Blue Cross Blue Shield isn't tracking for the prescriptions as well? Because they could, I don't. That's the piece I don't understand. Yeah. Um, with it now, the pain in the butt piece of all this is Datapath came back and said, "Well, you have to decide by the 15th." Yeah. We just found out about that. I put, put in. I think it was the the, the ninth of the month. Yeah. Um, so we have to tell Datapath, yes, we're going to use the cards, or no. If we say no, we're out of compliance with the CBA. Yeah. What does Pietro say about this memorandum agreement? This uh, seems to be, I, I talked with the, the Superintendents Association, this seems to be the way to go. Um, the, Robin had a conversation um, with folks, I think on the, with, with Pietro, um, and she was actually the one before that we even got this in our hands because we were hearing about it. We were getting these updates from VI all the time on what was going on. And so the easiest thing and the, the most cost effective thing to do is just to pay that first dollar amount on the prescriptions. So she had already said that to me before even any of this stuff coming. Well, conceptually, I understand, but until Pietro looks at the language of the contract, I'm not willing to approve it. My, my recommendation would be is that we don't approve the contract, but we approve the first dollar uh, amount so that we're covered. And we'll uh, let him make it so. Yeah, and that was my, um, I think that was my recommendation in the superintendent's report. Um, so it's, yeah, we want to cover the first dollar, dollar amount because we're in compliance at that point in time and it pretty much is following along with the agreement uh, but I don't like signing off on the other parts and pieces there if we don't have to mm -hmm. um, and I don't there are some other wrangling going on that I don't understand um, in talking about the issue with who is the teacher under the CB and who is not um, they kind of came back we'll talk about this a little later and said well you know we don't nego we don't negotiate side agreements it's not good protocol so then why are you giving us a sign agreement? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get the, the logic there. So I, my, my suggestion, my recommendation, again, is the board's choice to make the decision, is um, to, to reckon, my recommendation is to do the first dollar. You know, just approve them to be able to use the card, pay the prescription first dollar. That way we're not really in violation of the CBA. Um, could they come back on us if that's just what we did? The way the language in the CBA is worded is it sounds like the administrator is supposed to handle all the paperwork stuff, some of which they're going to have to do, but it's gray enough that we could fight if we, if we needed to. But I don't well, think we don't want to fight. No, we, but, but we do want a good We do want to, do want to effectuate what we negotiated, and yep. if it's been a rocky road, that's unfortunate. Mm. We're ending up paying for it. But uh, we have to make sure that our people are taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. So the total additional outlay is estimated to be about 150000 Somewhere in there. Something like that. Yeah, give or take. Mm -hmm. And like I said, she was confident that there was more than enough in that, that account mm -hmm. um, based upon spending so far this year uh, to be able to cover it and still have a little left over. So the, that, this will be for the fiscal year beginning July 1st? Or this will be starting right now. Right now. Okay. Um, the, other th the other thing that was interesting that's happening is um, VHI, um, and I think some because they were pushing uh, data path a little bit, has come in and said, okay, well, there is a blackout there where they can't use the cards anyway while we do the computer transition. VHI has stepped in and said, we, we VHI, will pay. Wow. Mm -hmm. For them for that time period. That's the May 8th. So, so then this whole blackout thing. So, yeah, have Pietro. Yeah, so a lot of it's not. Right. Yeah. So, what would you like from us tonight? Um, if if the board is comfortable and willing, is um, just the recommendation for me to be able to tell Data Path tomorrow that yes, we will be paying the first dollar okay. uh, for prescriptions so that at least we're not in violation of that part of the CBA. 
So do I have a motion for us? Do we have to vote on this? Yes. Probably, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So how do you frame the motion? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make the motion if someone helps me with the language. So why don't we move it as um, an instruction to the superintendent um, to have our attorney draft up a legal document that um, memorializes the board's vote to provide the first dollar, I don't know how to phrase it, maybe help me, the first uh, amount. From, from first dollar of out of, out of prescription, prescription, yeah, out of pocket prescription costs. costs. Or expenses. Um, such that our employees will be held harmless and financially harmless for held financially harmless um, and the new administrator will be taking it from there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's an interesting situation. All we need to do is make sure that Pietro knows we w what we want to pay and the obligation that we're taking on for the employees to hopefully satisfy them. And Lane, could you have Pietro put that in writing and negotiate whatever written document is required between the district and uh, the union? We should authorize a more assigned back when that comes. Or did that just have a motion? Yes. But That's it good. Needs, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So we have a motion. As Linda wrote down. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can paraphrase in just a Thank second. Thank you. First dollar. Market costs up to uh, person. Wired uh, under the goal. So a motion to instruct the superintendent um, to have PHO review the agreement and to negotiate with uh, the union to completion and then to allow payment of uh, the first dollar out of pocket costs for faculty covered under the CBA um, up to the amount required under the gold CBHP plan, which is what they were. I think what are we missing? Well, and because I'm not clear on whether the union is would be happy with it. Do we know whether what their position is? It's um it's it's all in line with the agreement that they put. They they had a bunch of other language in there, but it was more kind of stating um, what their hardships were to try to justify the additional expense of us paying first dollar. Um, was my, my read on it. So. Can you speak to that? Not really. That's the question. Whether the union, is, is this, was this what the union was proposing? Okay. Yeah, Nora, Nora was the presenter along right. with Deb Chamberlain. For mm -hmm. Well, having Pietro negotiate it, my presupposes that he can get an agreement with them, and if we can't, based on this proposal, I guess it'll get kicked back to the site. Yeah. I'd get with them first thing since this place has a deadline. But at least it, it covers us. It covers us on the data path piece because they got to have their. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing. They got to have their instructions. Good. Mm -hmm. So the data path doesn't implicate the prescription thing. No, it's they're just saying if they don't if they don't get a response by May fifteenth, they don't have <coughs> during their card transition, they don't have a way of making everything work out. Again, it doesn't make any sense to me, but they're putting their thumb down on it. Mm -hmm. and then the second motion would be the Okay, so who is in that will second that motion? Okay, there, Jen. Jen, you okay. all those in favor of this motion? Say I can I ask for my thing yeah. to the So Lane, the deadline of tomorrow is kind of unrelated to this motion, really, isn't it? Um, the the motion would just be allowing us to give DataPath the information to pay first dollar amount. 
Um, we are not agreeing to or declining anything in terms of the union. We're taking care of what we need to do the best way we can, I would argue, in terms of you know, following through on the requirements of the CBA. Call, call uh, Pietro first thing. Okay. Yeah. Just because I don't want to get contractually obligated if we don't have an agreement with the mm -hmm. union on mm -hmm. the thing that we're offering. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to us. I mean, we're paying them more money to each employee, but right. Right. That makes sense. so they say yes. Or no. So we still want to, but aren't we? We're just telling the company that we're going to continue to use those cards. That we're, but but the change would be that we're paying first dollar amount. Mm. <coughs> we either we either use the cards and pay first dollar amount, or we don't use the cards and we do everything paper wise, which that would be. So what it yeah. boils down in my mind right. is what we're trying to do here is to allow or we can make you a to direct on. Pietro to get us into an agreement where we are not in out of compliance with the CBA mm -hmm. in relation or to Or renegotiate. This. Well, we're, we are kind of out of compliance. Well, right. But to renegotiate things any, to, uh, yeah. Not through any fault of our own. It's just but, the way this happened. It wasn't something we intentionally, we intend not to be, we, we intend to be in compliance. We just can't. So he would be negotiating the agreement that the board would sign mm -hmm. and, and justify. And then the question for you guys is, is that separate from a lot of data path to do its job and not put us any further out of compliance than we need to be? <laughs> so how do we want to see here? It's a very curious situation because you're contracting with two different parties. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're telling the administrator to do something, you haven't got your agreement yet. Does that happen automatically now? <laughs> Has the train left the station? You could happening? you could make the statement in um, that this is not precedent setting this part of the motion. This is not meant to set a precedent. This, this the purpose of this is to make sure that we're taking care of the employees as best we can given the, the circumstances until. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think that's an Good interesting. Good try. I don't know. <laughs> 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 um, nice to put in there. Yeah, it is. If this is to keep us in compliance right. with the current agreement. As best we can. <laughs> well, still, they could, based on the wording, it's gray. We could still technically be out of compliance because the way it's worded kind of implies that the administrator, you know, data path is supposed to handle all the paperwork and whatnot and tracking everything. Right, yeah, but technically they're saying they can't, and that's out of our control. Out of our hands. Yeah, but we still signed a contract that said we'd do that. Okay. So, so I have, I have um, an idea. Why don't we, why don't we um, authorize the negotiating committee to talk to Pietro tomorrow about it? And so long as two of the three people can then vote to do whatever they want because they would be authorized to make the decision for the board after right. we talk with Pietro. Makes sense. Are you going to be around tomorrow? Uh, I'm always available okay. by phone. Is Paul in town? I talked to him yesterday. Well, if not, I'm, I'll, I'm around tomorrow. I'm available till 8 in the morning and then by, by phone until 6 or when I get back in town. It's just really hard to do with this time constraint unless I think we have something like that. Would that work for you, Will? Yeah, I mean, like I said, the big thing with the data path was well, we tell them tomorrow. Why don't, why don't we, may I amend my motion or whoever's <laughs> well, motion? So, so, okay, so a clarifying question. <laughs> <laughs> if we, if the board says we're going to do this, which is meet the out-of-pocket expenses up to a certain amount in order to get the company to keep the card thing. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. The caveat, well, there doesn't seem like there's any other alternative, so it would be, I don't see how many other alternatives there would be as we're negotiating with the um, union? And, and I, 
And again, I'm just thinking off of, off of what you're saying. The agreement to do the card with data path is an operational decision to try to stay in compliance. That's what I mean. As opposed so to, I think the, the other piece of is piece. negotiated to lock it in permanently or find a better solution. Right. You can always renegotiate a better solution. That's what I'm, it seems like two separate things. Like yes, one is a it is, I, I get both, I get, because it is confusing. Yeah, the thing I'm trying to avoid So, I, so I guess what I'm saying is if, for some reason, by 4 p.m. tomorrow, an agreement hasn't been reached. There should be a caveat or a something in there authorizing a direction to go yeah. in order to meet the deadline set by the company with our best intentions using the best information we have at that point. I guess that's what I, I, I would... I don't want to miss that deadline, but no, I want to make sure yeah. we follow mm -hmm. the right... Totally. Yeah. Having the panel talk with uh, Pietro and having him get this straight avoids us making mm -hmm. and making a unilateral decision about this. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be negotiated when problems like this arise. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to impose our will, even if we think it's, you know, an improvement and it gives them a better thing. Um, it really should be done, you know, right. yeah. okay from both yeah. sides. And I don't like the fact that, you know, shortly before the meeting they show up with yeah, yeah deal with, with what you, you got to deal with, yeah. and then we have this deadline. Right, that's hard. I think thing. we need a, like a little <laughs> yep. a wiggle room. So, how about if we um, amend the motion to be the same thing that the board um, approves the concept of the first dollar, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. however you describe it, um, and authorizes the negotiating committee. Um, through Pietro to effectuate that con concept by 4 p.m. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, then we just tell Datapath to go for it. Yeah. And if not, Datapath, well, I hate to set up a situation where the union might want to just drag their feet and then they get what they want anyway. Hopefully they will negotiate in good faith and we can get in touch with people tomorrow. It feels like a, um, like a no win. Like I think everybody is in, feels like a no win situation like for everybody involved based on the circumstances that happen. Well, look, the, but, the budget yeah. situation we're in this year, um, the fact that overall we did save money because of the change in health care costs. Um, yes, we made our employees not just, we didn't hold them harmless, we gave them a better deal on the health insurance. So, yeah. But we have the ability to do this, right, Lane? Okay. Then you got we, time. We need to do the right thing for our employees, and even if it's not seen as, let's hope it, it is. Keep our fingers crossed. So the motion is for the negotiating committee to meet with Pietro. Um, just make sure you, uh, by 4 p.m. Um, if not, then if a if a negotiated agreement can't be reached. And you're authorized to do the card thing anyway. Okay. And we have Pietro continue to work to resolve it with, through the fee committee. As long as you guys get the authorization to the negotiating committee. I'll keep myself on my own. And then, okay, so that would be the first motion and then potentially the second one with the line sign. Okay. So do I remake the motion as amended? Yes. I can make the motion as amended. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got it kind of written down, but I can clean it up. Someone want a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We need a second motion. To allow someone, probably board chair, to be able to sign an agreement if it's negotiated um, with Pietro in good faith. And he's comfortable with it, and the negotiating team is comfortable with it. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So our negotiating team tomorrow is going to be Brooke and Ann. Is that what I hear? Yeah, yeah and I'll call Paul. And we'll call Pietro first thing. Who seconded that last motion? Kate. Kate. Okay. Rachel. 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 Rachel.
contest is not helping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's all on that, and I believe. All right, so uh, facility plan update so I, on your handout, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I taken, there was a, the one, the, the summary one that they had pulled together. Um, I kind of dressed it up a little bit. That's what the handout is. It's the same information, um, but also kind of added a little bit more detail um, behind what everything that was uh, spent on and why. Um, and then also a prioritized kind of work list um, out there for upcoming work that needs to be done. And I think folks will want to kind of review that. And, Talk about their own parts and pieces if you'd like. We're doing tennis balls and scissors. And the deep pipes going almost out to the leach field. Really? Yeah, I they, can. They, they, had to go, they had to go in deep to get those. <laughs> and if this also, as you guys are looking, if this is an acceptable model um, for the facilities reports, we'll continue to, or we can change it any way that you like. It's more useful. Previously, they went out like five, it was like a five-year plan. Yeah. I don't know if you'd seen the copies of that. I have not, um, the, I can find it. The facilities reports yeah. that we saw, uh, they had a kind of major work completed, um, yeah. a prioritized list. And then a lot of it was um, explaining um, how the surplus funds that were given right. were being used. Mm -hmm. Which um, is helpful, I think. Yeah. But I'll see if I can find a fighter. Okay. Yeah, because I think it's good to have they need to, projected. They need to be developing it anyway. That's part of the right. needs assessment this year. So the question is, do you want us to adapt the old if we find it or just build new? Is there a preference? Because I was assuming to build new. Well, I think it's a good checklist yeah. because it was fairly comprehensive, at least in my recollection. I mean, if you're building a new one, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might as well not reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. It's like a packing list. So it was like a, it was like a checklist that was... Um, with the, we've had, uh, mm -hmm. we should have this with all the genders. Mm -hmm. we yeah, we yeah. like, had like the costing, once they got the costing in there, it had co projected mm -hmm. costs, and then when they did, went to bid it updated. And gotcha. It was helpful, I think. Um, I would guess that it's probably first quarter of 17. Was it last one? the last year. Yeah. yeah. Maybe March or April or something. Yeah. Trouble is, you may have them all the way back to like 10. <coughs> but if it's we a, don't, they can just use it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. 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 So it's the dark I don't think, I don't have. think they can find it. No. But we have the printed copies. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it, mean, it doesn't hurt to take a look at those when you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one is uh, money spent. Yep. Um, so summary of, of major work completed this year. Um, so that's 169, 157, and then it's kind of broken down. Right. Um, talks about you know the, the vendors that came in, like Arc Mechanical is primarily a heating and cooling system and um, control technologies. Um, there's also work that is high priority that's already either been out the bid or they've got the quotes to begin the work, okay. depending upon the dollar amount. Um, that's on the back, so there's 121,232 there. Um, and then what, what each is for. Um, and they're, they've been pretty good too about trying to capture rebates and whatnot when they can, which was kind of neat to see. And then the other one, just to kind of throw it in there, is they do track. Um, the work requests that come in under school do, there's a software that tracks it that way. You can tell, you know, what's going on. You can get a feel for the district. You can prioritize things. So they've had 790 this year, and they've completed 715 so far. Um, so they've been, been pretty busy. And so some of these are to be done. Um, uh, yeah, the back. Okay. 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 
So they plan that, ready to go. They're going to have to bid with the companies if they were high enough to need to. Um, if not, they've got the quotes in the right row. And so it's kind of the up and coming. Do you want to talk about plans for um, Raven with the security now, or? Oh, uh, we could. Um, it's part of facilities. Um, so Raven, at this point in time, they are sending it out to bid. Um, so we're waiting for those to come back. Um, and then I'll have an update for the board at that point in time. Uh, this sheet is the, the security um, piece that we were talking about at the last meeting in terms of trying to get the, the, the funding in there to make these changes um, you know, as soon as we can just because they're, they're, they're security issues. Um, they went out to bid with three places. Um, some of them could do the work. Some of them could do part of the work. Um, they went down and they chose uh, CTI, um, Control Technologies, for one, two, three, four, five, for six of them, and then uh, DSS uh, for the seventh. Um, a lot of the pieces for uh, CTI control technologies, and one of the reasons to go with it, um, a lot of cases they were lower cost, but they're also the main company that's done all the work to get the security systems in there, mm -hmm. and so they're going to be able to integrate this work directly with um, you know, the systems that are already in place. Um, so that's the, that's the case. And this was the one that we talked about. I did check with Robin just to kind of secure about whether they could get the money out of surplus ahead of time. Had that been done in the past? And then, you know, pay it back from year-end funds. She said it had been done in the past. Um, so unless there's questions on. So the intent is that this work to be done over the summer then? Is it uh, as soon as possible. I, the, the hope was um, over the, the last kind of long vacation, which was what, April? Mm -hmm. You can't keep track of the months anymore. Um, but uh, to, just to try to get it, because it is, it is security pieces. There's a lot, lots of parts and pieces they can do, um, especially like the, the panic buttons and the, uh, the door lock buttons uh, for the teachers and whatnot. The atrium work. Um, where you've kind of got where the two sets of doors in each building so that the people can come in, have to interact with the front office staff, get signed in, get checked out before they go through the, the other lock. At least at the high school, that's going to be some of the work. Um, they, they actually have to go like through some walls. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, at least if we can get done by the end of the summer, that's fine too. Uh, but look, we don't, we really don't have much uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Um, but it, it, at some point in time, um, if not today, probably, you know, I would recommend a motion to, you know, at least out of the surplus, if there's any at the end of the year, and then approval for anything above and beyond. Uh, excuse me. When I say surplus, I mean what we have left over at the end of the year. Still in our facilities. Still budget, in our yeah. facilities budget at the end of the year, and then anything needed above and beyond that be authorized to pull from mm -hmm. right. surplus, which is uh, a typical procedure. Yeah. Right. So as soon as you have numbers and all for that, so this is ninety-four thousand. Yep. Mm. Are we voting on this tonight? Do you need money out of surplus? Uh, I don't think we need to. Um, that, that vote can happen any time before um, end of the school year, so we could do it at the next. But basically, you know, we'll use the money that's left over at the end of the year, and then um, hopefully an authorization from the board to supplement it if we don't have enough. Okay. So we'll do that. And then the Raven building, we talked a little bit about the kind of what, what I call the gross estimate, you know, their best guess in terms of removing the building and, and rebuilding on site was about 680. Um, again, you know, I'm not looking too deeply into it. They came out for a day and a half, uh, but now it's going out for bids, so those guys will have some pretty, pretty tight quotes on things to be able to, to talk about. And we had done the, I think we did part of the breakdown, um, was adding them up. Raven's a little tricky in that um, it's money not spent because we're sending the kids there. It's money that we don't have to budget for. And so kind of looking at the needs of the students that are in the Raven program and looking at what it would cost to send them to like an EVA if we even could. Um, I estimated that over the course of, I have to go back with the exact figures, but I believe over the course of nine years, it's probably saved us 945000 
Um, and that does not include the transportation back and forth, which can run another 40 or 50,000. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a significant savings. The building, if it comes in around the 680, would pay for itself in six to seven years easily. So and then you have a nice building there for whatever. What's going to happen with those students for the upcoming school year? So uh, if the work has to happen um, you know, towards the end of the summer and in the fall, um, there is enough space with the uh, decreased enrollment in the tech center area and in the high school that we could move folks around for a month or two to get the work completed and get the students in there. Um, Jim didn't want to do that, and understandably so, um, early on because it's a therapeutic uh, right. program. Yeah. Uh, but he's, he's understanding at this point in time to get the new building, you know, that, that maybe has to happen, and, and we don't want the students in that old building next year. If we have them in there um, reasonably, we would have to go out, get some air filtration and, and things like that in place that would be one-time cost that we would be able to recoup afterwards. Um, so. All right, um, we have an EL 2.7 report. So 2.7 was compensation and benefits. Um, was actually a pretty simple one. I think there were only like five provisions in it um, and report that all provisions um, and therefore the overall policy was in compliance. And that is available with all the evidence um, in the, the main office. I'll put it out on Linda's desk every time anybody wants to drop in. To do we know who is reviewing that? It should be on the uh, next the next meeting. I think I said who it was. Okay. It? it was Paul and Jen. Okay. I agree to that one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the year. I picked the really exciting <laughs> ones this year. I need to mix them up. Okay. Okay. All right. Legislative update. We're keeping it going here. Yes. Um, all right. So two two bills that kind of are important to us in terms of education. Um, both are kind of in flux. They have passed House. They're being fought over in the Senate, and then the governor has weighed in at least, at least on H911. Um, H911 is the the bill that's up to try to overhaul kind of the educational funding. Um, system in the state of Vermont. Um, currently what they're at is they're looking at adding 2.6 cents per $100 of assessed property value to the property tax and 5 cents to the non-residential tax. Um, they are putting an income sensitivity piece in place for properties of 400,000 or less. So in other words, they'll take your income into account in terms of the taxes that you pay for properties is of less than 400,000. Any amount above 400,000, you would pay the, the typical penny rate for. Um, the governor at this point in time, you know, it's, it's unsure what's gonna happen with this plan because he's threatening to veto any plan that increases um, property taxes. Um, they would stop transferring money out of the general fund um, into the education fund. Um, like they've been doing for, for years now, and instead uh, give all the revenue from sales and use tax and 25% of meals and use tax uh, would go into the education fund directly. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Education fund under the pro proposed bill would no longer pay for many expenses unrelated to K-12 education. Um, they were pulling a lot of money out of the education um, funding bill to do other things, um, mm -hmm. the adult education programs in the state, renter rebates, uh, the Community High School of Vermont, uh, the Department of Corrections program. Um, so we'll stop doing that. Um, there is buy-in, we talked about this a little earlier, from all sides um, on a statewide um, health care system. So the teachers would negotiate directly with the state. Uh -huh. Student staff ratios will no longer be considered. Instead, an advisory task force will be put into place to help um, districts decide where to make cuts. And then the, the one that it's, it's hard to tell what the overall impact is going to be, um, but provides each school with a base payment per pupil. So every pupil that you have, um, they would give you $11,916 for. Um, districts that want to spend more um, than that $11,916 would have to do so by creating a homeschool tax. Oh, but every district. Uh, yeah, but, but so the part of the argument that we had with the, at the superintendent level was this idea that you know every form came in to provide equity. So now what you have is if everybody's getting eleven thousand, you know nine hundred dollars, when the state average is about seventeen thousand, and ours is we're actually under the state average. I think we're sixteen nine coming up next year somewhere in there. Um, the wealthier districts are going to be able to supply more 
above and beyond, and those kids will benefit and their air quality may be destroyed. So, but they feel that there is no challenge based upon this program um, at the Supreme Court level. Um, but again, it's unsure whether or not it will, will go through. Like I said, the governor is starting to need to. Um, the other one is uh, H897, and that's the one that uh, makes changes in how states pay for special education. Um, currently, uh, what the state does is it reimburses us 50% uh, of the cost for staff. And then it's a 55, it's a weird formula, sometimes it's 55%, sometimes it's 56% of any other cost, like if we send a student out, um, they'll, they'll reimburse us. Um, any costs that are above 50,000, they will give us 90% uh, of once it exceeds. Um, what this will do is instead of basically just providing you that reimbursement, regardless of how many students you have, they're going to replace it with basically what's a, like a block grant. They'll give you a chunk of money that's uh, dependent upon your overall student population and that's your job to do. Um, they do have a couple of pieces in there. Um, you know, they'll cover 95% of the costs above 60000 um, And the other piece with the block grants is um, they're trying to open it up to allow us to use the money in more ways to support like regular education students that may be struggling as well. Um, that's not going over too well with the Senate. Um, they don't really feel that uh, schools will have too much leeway in terms of what it can do with the money. And, uh, they want to put some controls on there to make sure it's going what it's for. So. It's correction of problems before they become problems but isn't, yeah, it's, it's more important. It's isn't is just best practice. Yep. Well, yep. That, it brings up the equity thing too. No, it does. If you get a flat rate mm -hmm. and you have a significantly high needs child or children, right? What do you do? Right. You also get penalized, um, and what will happen is if you build a very good special education program in your district, it's effective. Um, parents will research that they will move mm -hmm. in your district, and your special ed population will go up. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a reimbursement system, you're able to compensate for that. If it's a block, if you get a high concentration, right. it might make it difficult. Right, right. Um, but they have a five-year phase-in plan on this if it goes through. Mm. Um, I'm not sure quite what the phases are each year, but. Thank you. Okay. All right, on our consent agenda, we need to approve the minutes from um, our last meeting on April 9th. Mm. I don't know if you have had time to read them over and see if they're complete. Um, we need to approve administrative staff contracts. You just signed. You All want, those are the you ones. Want those back? Okay. Yep. No, I don't. Okay. Approve professional staff contracts. Um, new teachers it look like they're uh, special ed related and music. <laughs> Three special ed and one music. Yep. Um, approve 2018-2019 local education agency plan. Let's see if together. What's that about? That is uh, local education agency plan is um, special education. Um, Steve Kenny pulled together. Okay. Um, Do you want the plan for it? I mean, it's in here. It's actual plan. Um, so you think you do every year? Yeah. Yeah. No, it looks like. It. Uh, approved district continuous improvement plan. So that's, uh, that was the long five or six pager that I put in there. Um, that is a new requirement um, this year um, as part of the changes with No Child Left Behind, uh, moving to the Every New Child Succeeds Act. Um, the piece of it is that uh, there needs to be a district Improvement plan that's based upon the district data. You know, what did you what did you, what did you recognize based upon the data um, in terms of your students? Where are they struggling? And what are you going to do about it? Um, that has to be submitted to be able to apply for the consolidated federal programs money, so the Title One, Title Two, Three, and Four monies. Um, and so I've got all the data stuff. Uh, hopefully, maybe June. You know, I can throw up all the, the the data and parts and pieces that went into this. Um, I'll be talking with. Uh, the principals we have a cabinet meeting tomorrow to take a look at it get some planning done before october um, because we've got some structural changes we've got to make and i want to make sure that uh, we're able to plan ahead so that we put into the budget what we need this year you're here to actually i can actually look ahead a little bit and see dealing with it as it comes next year which is nice um,
That's quite thorough, actually. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Approve negotiator for side agreement with professional staff union. So that was uh, the discussion um, about who should be in the CBA and who should not. Um, the, in talking with Nora, they have suspended any timepiece on it. They are willing to enter negotiations as opposed to go through um, the grievance process. Um, there was a report that went out a while back that kind of explained the thought process in reconnecting with um, with Pietro. Um, it looks like they have a very strong case. There are some gray areas there. Um, and I can tell you too, in talking with some of the other superintendents, um, they, this is happening. The union is doing this at all the districts. Um, a lot of them have already made their agreements. They've renegotiated that as so. Um, so, but it's it's to allow allow either me or, or the negotiating group to sit down with the union and renego renegotiate that piece as opposed to going to grievance on it. So we're not necessarily just talking about the teacher in question this year, but going forward. Yeah, because it'll all and be encompassed under. Well, that makes a lot more sense because given the, and you know, from what we heard, given the finite nature of these contracts, we would be then in a position of having to rip them at the end of the year. Right? Yeah. And that's part of the, um, at, at the end is the discussion is there are some unintended consequences of this um, because these are primarily folks that are funded under title funds. Um, we often don't know, you know, if we get the title funding until June. We have to notify teachers by April 15th if they're coming back or not. They will all have to get rift at the end of each year and wait to get rehired when we get notification that we got the funds. Um, but primarily the teachers that they are talking about, and I had a clarification with Nora the other day, um, there are coaches and there are interventionists. The interventionists work directly with students, um, so those kind of would fall under the teacher category. Um, I made the point that the coaches are actually more administrators because they are working directly with um, teachers to train them in new paradigms of teaching, all sorts of that. Um, and so they're in agreement that those would be an administrator. They're not worried about those. They're just they're worried about the interventionist folks, the ones that work directly with kids, which makes sense. Um, so we've been kind of talking a little bit around and whatnot. So the motion would be to either allow me or allow the negotiating group to, to sit down, um, negotiate those parts and pieces, uh, and then get it finalized. Uh, but like I said, they came back to the day and said, well, we don't really do side agreements. You know? <laughs> so, and so I, I, I sit back and I said, well, then, you know, if that's the case, then you may have to start up the grievance process a bit, but I said, I'm not going to take, I am not going to take that to the board without a reason why you don't enter to the side agreements because it's common practice. So they're going back to try to get out of Stuart why he doesn't want to do it. There, 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 there's something going on there. I don't know what it is. Well, I don't care what it is. I mean, we have to The appropriate thing to do is to come to an agreement <laughs> on it. Make it part of the big agreement then. Don't yeah. make a side agreement. So I think Nora's on board, yeah. um, but she's checking. So do we want to appoint um, or approve negotiators, or do we want to have Lane run with this, or do we need a few of us to, who are on the teacher negotiation board? Who's on that? that? Is that the one we just it's talked about? Hands so yeah. 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 mm -hmm. Glad to meet. If you need to, I mean, that's what we're there for. So. Well, Lane's got to be there anyway. Exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can't, yeah. we can't be there with, Lane has to be there, and Pietro has to be there, so. Well, I don't know that we need an in-person thing anyway. I think right. Why don't we just um, leave it to the negotiating committee, and ultimately we can delegate right. the conversation to Lane. Yeah. Um, and then, but we have to actually vote on it because we have mm -hmm. the power there. Mm -hmm. um, and if Lane can work with Pietro to figure yeah. out concepts and language. Of course. Yeah. And no, yeah, the, the, if that was given given over, I'm not approving anything. I'm just trying to work on that. But you guys would have to read it to finalize right, well, it. Of course. Yeah, of course. Once Val gets a hold of us, <laughs> if we do that this summer, it may be in this lab ultimately. <laughs> but traditionally, yeah, all over Vermont, it's the board's 
And lastly, on our consent agenda, we've got to approve the restructuring of health reimbursement arrangements. So that would be probably the folks want to move altered the, the language that was agreed upon in the motion that was just voted. Huh? Or do we I, need I that? don't need all of that. I've got to <laughs> so we just strike that from the yeah. Thing? You could because you've already voted on yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Do you have to do you have to vote to remove it? <laughs> no, we would just make the motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Right? Yeah. yeah. Without that. Yeah. 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 All right. So do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda without um, with in amended fashion? I'll make the motion. Second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We're moving on to the superintendent's report. So that primarily focused on uh, water issues at Brookfield and the HRA, which I've explained. So I'll answer mm -hmm. questions if it's done. But there is the big thing right now is there they did get the water coolers in two weeks ago, Friday. Um, so they do have the, the fresh water. Um, there's a lot of investigation going on right now. Um, I have a state geologist um, who's actually, it's actually free to have them come out, which is kind of cool, um, to take a look just to see if it is feasible to, to drill a well there. I mean, if there's anything to actually hit, it's better, better than what there is. Otherwise, it's the, there may not be. Um, there's, it's fractured limestone and phyllite. Limestone isn't very porous, it's just because it's all broken up under there. Mm. Uh, but that's probably where a lot of the mineral content, you know, that high um, total dissolved solid counts is coming from. There's also phyllite in there, which is a, uh, it's slate that's been metamorphosed a little bit more. It's kind of shiny, it's a pretty stone, um, but that's pretty much chemically inert for the most part. Um, but yeah, so there, we'll, we'll see if there's any place on the 10, I guess there's a 10 acres. Are these things pretty Yeah. Uh, you know, cost-wise, um, the well is much more expensive. They were trying to get just a general idea on what a well would cost. We haven't got that number yet. But what I'll do is I'll just email the board and we'll get it. It should be any, any day um, now. Um, you know, that's a cost up front, and then it's just the monitoring that we're doing anyway that we have to do. Um, the reverse osmosis, um, there's the upfront cost, and there's, there's more maintenance that goes along with that. So over the course of time, it would be more expensive. Um, I'll see if I can find out, you know, how many years out yeah. um, that would be. That's been a problem for many years. Mm -hmm. I tried it. And of course, the, the, the dissolved pieces, the, the stuff that's dissolved in there have gotten worse over the nine mm -hmm. years. Um, four hours for the aftertaste. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. So yeah. I don't blame the kids for that. Yeah. A long time. All right, so I appreciate the investigation into it. It seems like there's, it's pretty comprehensive to get all this information to understand what's going on. Okay. So I had some thoughts about the superintendent's report okay. that I wanted to share with like, things I've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. And like I appreciate keeping us informed of the ongoing issues that are arising and you know, keeping us in the loop on that. And I'm just thinking of like as a board member, the other things I'm, I'm curious <laughs> about would be um so two things one would be um like had an example the there's a new team in the elementary schools so you know I, i'm reading the principal's report that's telling me what they're working on i'm just wondering how that's going what the community response has been things like that and then also you know ditto on the high school there's been the community group and we, we talk about it sometimes but i'm just thinking like things that it might be easier to report on and then also thinking about like the superintendent and the work that you do and being the new superintendent are there things that like you're excited to be working on or like are there other things you want to tell us about that you're excited about or that you want to share with us as well without making it i don't want you to have to do a 10 page report because i do a 10 page CEO report, oh. and I don't recommend anybody do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, and actually, I think that's a, a good thing too. Plus, if there are things that are coming up from month to month that you want to know more about to help you in your decision making process. Yeah. And I mean, that's like my viewpoint, and I'm not, I don't know mm -hmm. how to fix it. Is mm -hmm. that too reasonable? No, the biggest excitement that I've got, I always, I always enjoyed the curriculum piece, and so um, finally getting settled in to kind of, kind of look at the data. I thought of my other sample was um, the after work of the um, presenter. 
Um, thank you. I was mm -hmm. I was blanking on his name because that was something that we wanted to yep. have you on the line. But you had a plan in place. I'm just you know, I'd like to hear. Yeah. Here's so, yeah. So um, in terms of, like, I can hit a couple of them really quick. In terms of the work, um, like I said, the curriculum pieces is what I'm most excited about. Um, the data shows that there is work that needs to be done. We've, we've touched on a little bit of it this year. Um, in terms of working with the principals, there's a little bit, a little bit of resistance, not in a, not in a bad way. Um, but I think the data is going to make it plain. Um, and that's part of the meeting tomorrow. Um, that was uh, kind of a special cabinet meeting I threw, threw into place when I got the data done just to sit down and start to take a look and say, hey, this is, this is where we, we're at. Um, what are the things that are contributing to this that are actually within our control? Because we don't waste our time talking about stuff, stuff that's not. And what structures um, do we need to put in place um, to get this work done? And that way, again, part of it is to do that pre-planning before the budget comes up in October. Mm -hmm. That way, if there's a budgetary impact, um, you know, we, we've got it planned out, we've got it in place, because the budget's always a year ahead of time. Um, the after work right now with Calvin Terrell, we had the, the day, we may have spoke about this earlier, we had the day um, I went worked with the students that had worked with Calvin, pulled them together to work on ideas on how to move forward. So there are a variety of those student groups that put plans in place that they themselves can do. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a list of that, um, which has been great. And what we will do is next year during the advisories, get the students to actually implement. Cool. Um, and I can provide you guys with a list. Um, the, the one common pattern that came out of all the discussions from the students, which was kind of interesting, um, though it kind of took a little bit different shape, uh, depending upon what the student group was talking about, it, is we want, we want people to know us. And in some cases, you know, it was we want them to know us as a learner. In some cases, it was we want them to know us as a person. Um, in some cases, it was uh, we want them to know us as somebody just outside of the academic environment, you know, the things that we're up to mm -hmm. and, to, and to take an interest. And so we talked about different ways. Um, that was a neat one. That was one of the groups that I, I worked directly with um, was different ways that we could put that into an advisory period. Mm -hmm. um, to have those conversations and structure it between the students and the teachers. So I thought it was really cool. Oh, yes. yeah. So some good stuff. Um, well, part of it is uh, hopefully with uh, both administrators back to administrators next year is stepping back a little bit and making it a high school. Mm -hmm. We've done the work, we've got the information, even got the plans, and I'll be there to help and, 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 and tutor if needed, but they got to start doing this on their own. It's got to start coming from the inside. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of the, the problems I've seen across the district, well, I'll actually use somebody else's expression for it, is uh, they're managing things, they're not fixing them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the things that we're seeing with the rise in the special education funding is that you know, you've got all these students that are coming in, um, so we're getting the interventionists in there to help them, but the interventionists aren't solving the problem. They're helping the kid focus in class that day, but when the two of them leave class, the kid still has no more skills mm -hmm. right. in terms of what we're causing the problem than, than beforehand. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the, the things that we're looking at. So getting them involved in that piece is, is the big focus for next year. Fix, don't manage. Mm -hmm. so, good stuff. And I, I, can, I can add in others on, on this as well. A lot of it with the, um, the schools, I don't report out on this much because they usually put their own reports in. Yeah, right. But I yeah, can. That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can I ask you something about um, the high school? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So, I think that the community is suffering a little bit right now from uh, fundraising fatigue. That's <laughs> the time of year. Um, I haven't seen the coin drops yet. Did they do that here? Uh, oh, they did. How much fair they get you? <laughs> um, but, you know, the SHIZ program has been in existence for uh, mm -hmm. 25 years now, and they <clears throat> have a fundraising effort every other year because yep. we only send our kids every other year. And um, so that's pretty prescribed in terms of when it happens. Um, I think there have been, with the Nicaragua trip, I think it's a fabulous opportunity. But my understanding is that this year the grant money is from the various foundations that we often uh, get wonderful support from. They're getting barraged at the same year now. Yeah. Is there any way that we could get a better cooperation from year to year so that on the off year, you know, it's not two or two it's and like then nobody... It's the asked. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, But the French um, 
the French trip is the opposite year. So Nicaragua goes every other year, and then Guadalupe, they've been twice. I don't know if they continue to go to there, but that would be next year. So we already have a fundraising How much are they? Guadalupe was about the same as Nicaragua, though I don't know how much, uh, how many students go. Of course, that they had a big group to Nicaragua this year. I, I had, had that question too. That that more a thought. So I'm not saying that we need, need or should do anything, but um, at the beginning of the year when I was going around and, and checking in with folks in terms of an entry plan, um, there is some tension between some of the groups. I mean, you know, one of the groups actually gets funded by the district. The others have to raise their own. And so part of the discussion when budget season comes around is pulling the numbers together over what the cost is and why don't we just put them all, um, depending upon how, how expensive it is. Um, the, uh, not, um, uh, the, the problem becomes yeah, is that the favor. equity piece, because it's not every kid goes. And right, right. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and I, and I also think that there's an incredibly important um, Skill. process that right. happens of bonding and of teaching these children if they want to go on this trip. This isn't just about getting picked. Mm -hmm. This is about you really working towards a goal, accomplishing it, and doing a heck of a lot of work to, to make that happen. Um, so I am sort of in favor of not paying the whole bill. Um, maybe if there could be more equity among the programs, but that piece is really important because that piece does not depend on, you know, anything other than your work and your devotion. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a wonderful opportunity for the kids to coalesce before they then go on a trip to a foreign country. In terms to trust each other and depend on one another. In terms of community impact, is it always the same folks that are paying for the fundraising? because then it kind of becomes a de facto tax on folks in a sense. That would be the only question. If it's, or finding a way to spread out the fundraising so it encompasses more people. That's why, that's why the rest areas on I-89 are really good. Yeah, because <laughs> oh, yeah. you get, get people put It's a good point. No, because it used to happen a lot, a lot of times I've been, and it's always the same, you know, 50 people that are always, and how yeah. do we spread that out a little bit more? Uh, I think each yeah. year there's a different, you know, it's different kids, so theoretically it's different. Downtown businesses take a hit. Downtown, for sure. Yeah. 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 So I think a, a proactive plan on coordinating. coordination because our group shouldn't be competing with each other either. It should be a good mix yeah. of both. But I agree with the being part of the fundraising processes. Good stuff. Well, I think it's a good point. I can, I'll take a peek, especially the coordination. I can I can report back a little bit too on on, on the current structure. I like the idea that they're not competing. Well, you know, you work for a nonprofit, you're, you're competing for those grants every year with a lot of other wonderful causes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were going to ask a question, I think, too. Yeah, I was just going to ask for an update on the uh, preschool situation. So, where they were at, um, the, the goal is not next year, but two years from now, is to have it at all three elementaries. That was the goal, if we could get it in place next year. Mm -hmm. um, Pat has done some wonderful work. Um, they've had the state come in, they've taken a look at the facilities at the two smaller schools at Brookfield and Braintree. Um, part of what's on the prioritized list is getting that work done to make sure that it's up to state code um, so you can have the preschoolers in there. They've been able to find a body for Braintree. They have not yet been able to find um, someone uh, for Brookfield. So it is not off the table at all. It's just it's it's a matter of finding finding the ability to do it. Um, but the intent is to have it at, at all three schools within two years. This is kind of the transition year. Kind of came up. The ideas came up about two three months ago. So we'll be running with it. Um, she's been working very closely with Robin um, to try to see what kind of grant, not grant money out there. There's a little bit of grant money. But what the reimbursement's going to be, we talked about that with the, the legislatures. Um, they actually have the reimbursement, they're putting it on the books at up to 70%. Um, and what that'll do is that'll mitigate, um, you know, what we have to charge um, that first year or so to, to get things up, up and off the ground. But right now it looks like we're injury. They're still trying for Brookfield. Um, they they got to get the bodies up there to do it. As I say, my understanding is that there's an issue with filing, finding qualified candidates and that it, uh, I, 
believe it's like two courses that are required. As it was, there were the folks that they found were even sending them off to get uh, get one of the, there's mm -hmm. two of them, I think they each need the same course mm -hmm. um, yeah. to meet the state requirements. Uh, I'm curious if you have, you know, interconnections with other superintendents around the state. It, it strikes me that um, other districts are experiencing kind of this lack of qualified candidates around early education with these new requirements from the state. Is that? I can ask. Is it, it yeah. be, yeah. I think so. I, don't, I can't speak for the schools, but I think finding the qualified staff that you can afford to pay has been an issue with all of the new state requirements for a lot of licensed and registered home daycares. And well, that's what I'm wondering because I, you know, I think in, going back to kind of the legislative update and thinking about board advocacy, mm -hmm. it strikes me that there may be a bigger issue going on that you know we're experiencing here in our district, but um, certainly might be a conversation to our rep representatives and. Yeah, but even the, the, the folks, like I said, the folks that they were able to find, they still have to go off and do the courses. Participate in these courses, yeah. 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 Um, and then part of it as well, it's not just the, the preschool, um, you know, because you know we didn't budget for this, we figured it out after the budget was done a few month, months afterwards, um, is putting in an after school um, program to raise a little bit of funding to help fund the preschool. Uh, that, but at least hopefully we'll have, have the end of the belt. And like I said, the other is has not been given up on. Mm -hmm. so still, still in the process. Um, and then the, the preschools, if there's spots are open, they're open for everybody in the district. We are a district. We are not a mm -hmm. individual schools anymore. Uh, so hopefully folks, if they want to you know, put in and, and be down together, even when we drive, is a pain. As I say, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's just that's the challenge. Good, yeah. it, it's a great opportunity, I think, and I'm excited to think about kind of this expansion in our yeah. our early education programming as a district. And, and then with, with me, a lot of it plays into the, the educational component. It's an opportunity to get them early. It's an opportunity mm -hmm. to hopefully prevent some of the damage. I'll, I'll use that expression. Um, Especially in terms of the, the, the trauma piece, so the students are coming in with behaviors that are more positive, positively support learning once they get there. Um, so there's a, there's a bigger piece to it, too. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> this was exciting. All right, so there's director and principal's reports, um, the financial report, anything that we should be aware of? How's lunch? Uh, yeah, I actually had a <laughs> bunch of notes on it. It's a, it looks scary when you look at it. I don't have it right there. Um, but it's, it's actually not. We haven't got the revenue in for the last two months yet. Um, our estimate is that it's not really 57 in the hole. Right now it's 17 once we get the two months of revenue. So we took a quick look at it today. Which is about what we said, you know, it's high in the winter and then it gets, 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 gets lower as you get towards it. There'll, there'll still be a deficit, but right. it's not going to be astronomical. The 17th is considerably less scary than 15. There was, um, to kind of put this on as an aside, because we're, we're on the lunch piece, there's discussion with the open forum, um, the community forum, about, you know, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have universal free lunch? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the, the ideas that came up um, reasons that that came up was this idea that you know the students that are on free and reduced lunch, you know they go through they get their their lunch and if they're still hungry what do you do? They get one and, and that's it. Um, so finding ways to kind of bolster stuff. Um, the tech center is putting the um, we talked a little bit about the edible landscape. Um, they are putting moving their gardening part of the gardening program um, over to the high school. It's off the soccer field. You can see the building going up where the uh, the little semi greenhouse is going to be. Um, but a lot of that is to get that space open up and start going through the supply of the cast so the kids can have that. The stuff is, is free um, and to help out a little bit. But that's, that's one of the discussions in the background is this idea of you know, making sure that if the kids are still hungry that there's something to have for them, um, which doesn't exist. But, um, other than that, it looks like there will be a surplus when I was going through and doing the calculations. Uh, I can't quite tell you how much. It can give you a ballpark um, somewhere between zero and probably 500,000. Um, there's 1.92 uh, million um, that are kind of left over. We got to take um, money out for some of the reimbursements that we got to pay for like the tech center and whatnot for tuitions and things back and forth. And we also have to pay the summer salaries. And then out of that 1.9 million, after those two things uh, are paid, uh, what's left over will be surplus. So uh, it'll be, uh, my guess is it'll be in the hundreds of thousands in the lower demand. Wow. We'll see. See how close I am when she finally gets the, the final number. Uh, 
the pile. A bunch of notes on here when I was asking, but everything else was pretty good. I'll show you guys see stuff. Okay, incidental inf information falls on here, the, the staff appreciation, um, he generally has that organized. Sounds like he had it pretty well set, which is doing good there. Yeah, um, I, think, I think that's organized. The RTCC meeting um, was held uh, last Thursday in, in advance of the um, open house. And um, so he reported, Jason reported about 135 enrolled students so far, which is about average. Um, kids drop out, and we usually get a few new enrollments. Um, the uh, Advanced Manufacturing has six registered kids right now, which is good. Um, and the, that room is going to be uh, worked on over the summer so that it's ready for the kids to come in. And then there was just, you know, lots of families and, and projects and, and stuff like that. Just the big, that was everybody yeah. had to be there for the Perkins right? right. So they signed the Perkins right? So, um, yeah, no, no other real news about the OTCC here. All right, so this Anne needs to do evaluation. I did. So the immediate, I gave us a four for well-planned, focused on the real work of the board. Um, that was good. The only thing I really knocked us for was diversity of viewpoint. Um, so participation was balanced. That's, I, mar I marked us down because I talked a lot. <laughs> so, you know. But otherwise, four to five, so we're all meeting our best. We much. We even were in the ballpark of our time, so yeah. that doesn't happen always. So it was good. All right, and so uh, we'll see you next next meeting. We have a lot of things to cover. We'll have an ends monitoring report and um, senior profile, which will be done by administrators. We, we also added on um, Jen's going to do a policy governance okay, trade on our calendar for tomorrow before I actually get to it. So if you think about it, bring your policy binders so that we can refer to them as we go through the, the scenario. And that would be great. All right. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? We do have an executive session, so we can adjourn. We can adjourn. Do we want to go? Uh, I'll move to go into an executive session. For the purpose of I How are you doing? It's nice to meet everybody. So I'm going to go with with Linda. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody will put that on. Has no one else doing it. Anybody second it? Good job, everyone. Sure.